This keyboard, or macro pad, is completely 3D printed, with pressure fit parts. No soldering or glue for both the frame and the electronics. This is possible because of the 3D printed hot swap sockets. Oh, and did I mention it's hand wired, so no PCB. Hi, my name is Jan and I'm a software developer, and I currently build hand wired keyboards. I started this build to streamline some issues I had while designing my last custom keyboard. And this 3D printed hot swap socket makes it possible to swap the keyboard plate and frame without desoldering the switches. Something that bothers me on my previous build where I would want to swap the frame. And it's also my attempt to get to a working prototype keyboard faster without having to design the final version of the switch plate and frame first. This makes the soldering step optional, so for all of you who don't like soldering but have a 3D printer, there's nothing stopping you from building custom keyboards now. And don't be afraid of the hand wiring. For this project, all you need is a 3D printer with some filament, six printed hot swap sockets with two clips each, a printed case and bottom plate, some solid core not insulated wire. I use silver plated copper wire with a 0.5 mm diameter, diodes, KO chalk or MX compatible switches, keycaps fitting these switches. I use 3D printed chalk keycaps. These are very easy to print. A microcontroller, in this case the Pro Micro, pliers, a wire cutter, and tweezers. This tutorial should work regardless of the size of your keyboard you want to build, as long as you have enough pins on your microcontroller. I prepared a simple macro pad with a 3x2 layout and some space for the microcontroller to mount to, next to the keys for easier wire routing. If you want to design your own, here are the most important dimensions. The holes for the switches are 13.8mm to just click them in. The layer lines are enough for the switches to grab. Spacing between the switches is 6.2mm, so you get a small gap with keycaps on. The spot for the microcontroller is 33.8mm in length and 18.2mm in width, and 1.5mm standoffs were added to access the pins. The case is printed in PLA and the bottom plate in transparent PETG for a see-through LED effect. You can just use the case like this, but if you want a more finished look, you can sand and paint the print. Usually I start filling in the bigger holes if there are any with wood fill, then using 240 grit sandpaper and sand until you get a very smooth finish. You can also just sand over the print quickly to make the bigger lines disappear. With white filament you don't even need to paint the print, as you can't see any discoloration from the dust. You can continue with painting it any way you like. I'll just do one or two coats of spray paint and then some clear coat. The clear coat is needed to make the whole thing more robust. At last add some silicone feed to the bottom plate so it doesn't move on the desk. Let's go over how to assemble the hot swap sockets, then wire up the keyboard and configure and flash the firmware for it. One hot swap socket takes about 11 minutes to print with no supports, but I like to use a brim on these small parts to keep them on the build plate evenly. After the print, you just need to bend the wire and insert this U-shaped wire on one side of the hot swap socket. Then cut down the length of the diode. Bend one leg at a sharp angle and insert it into the top piece, then rotate it into place. This can be a bit tricky when you do it for the first time, but it ensures that the diode stays in place. Also be careful as the diodes can break. Remember to keep the diode orientation the same for all hot swap sockets. I always let that black stripe point away from the switch. When inserting a switch for the first time, the wires will be bent into one direction, so it requires a bit more force, but after that they're easy to remove and insert again. After all keys have hot swap plates on them, it's time to put them into the frame and bend the wires into shape. The diode connects to the row, and the bent piece of wire connects to the column. The socket has channels to make the cable management easier and avoid any short circuits. First we start with the wires for the columns and cut it roughly to the right length. With a bit of extra wire, we start at the farthest switch from the microcontroller and then secure each clip on the hot swap plate. Then bend the wire after the last switch into the direction of a data pin that is convenient to reach. Cut the wire so it's a bit longer than it needs to reach the pin and bend it into a hook. Then insert it into the pin and just let the tension keep it in place. Pull at the wire to adjust the tension. You can bend the wire at the end of the column so it doesn't get loose. After all columns are done, it's time for doing the same thing for the rows. Each wire is routed above the column wire, so keep some more wire length between each switch so that the up and down movement doesn't cause too much tension.
Take care that no wire to the pins at the microcontroller is loose. They should be tight so that even with some force applied, they don't fall out and risk sorting some circuit. Then I'll write down which pins the rows and columns are connected to with this Pro Micro pinout chart. You can use any of the data pins. I just used all pins next to each other to show that the space is not too tight to wire to with uninsulated wire. Take note of the internal names of these pins. We just need the internal names for each column and each row. By the way, if you want to know more about how I got into hand-wired keyboards, check out my keyboard journey. Then it's just compiling the firmware. For example, on Mac, it's as simple as installing QMK with brew and then running the install command. Otherwise, follow the QMK getting started guide for the platform you're using. We use a simple template for the firmware and it's just a few steps to customize it to your board. Set the pins you wrote down as the column and row pins in the config.h file. Then adjust the keyboard layout in 3x2.h so the keyboard has a name for each key. And then add a key map to tell your board what key codes it should send on press. In key maps default key map.c. You can check the QMK docs for the available key codes. And then just run the QMK command for compiling the firmware for the correct board and key map. It's very simple to flash with QMK toolbox. Just load your hex file that QMK compiled in the toolbox and then connect the microcontroller to your computer and then connect the reset pin to ground with some tweezers. The controller should show up in QMK toolbox and then press flash. You should see some output that the operation was successful. Now the keyboard can be tested and checked if each key works. If not, check for the row and column connections and see if something is not touching correctly. I did build this board on a different body three times now and tried both the MX switches and the chalk switches. Overall, this gave me way less issues than I expected. And the connection was surprisingly secure, even with some rougher handling of the macro pad. Also, debugging issues is very easy. But keep in mind, the soldered connection will always be a more permanent solution. But I honestly can recommend this approach for any keyboard prototype or smaller macro pads. All files can be downloaded from my blog for free. Don't worry, you don't need to sign up for anything. I just want a place where I can update the files whenever I got something new. Links for that are in the description. Also, let me know what you think about this project in the comments. I'd like to use these hot swap sockets more often and feedback is always welcome. In case you get stuck somewhere in the build or are just interested in sharing your projects, come in and join my Discord server. Thank you all for being such an awesome community and see you next time.